Welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Kenneth Small, and in today's Mole in the Morning in the Gaming News for o November, not October, November 7th, that is a Monday, 2022, we have some hot of the press news for you. Actually, this news, well, when you will see this, this news will be <laughs> a few hours old, but this is literally just in. Uh, there is a new marketing video for PlayStation regarding Final Fantasy 16. Uh, there's nothing. Um, there's nothing really new in the trailer. It's just a re uh, recutted trailer of all the footage we have already seen. But there is there is a very interesting disclaimer now in the video, which says. Final Fantasy 16 is anticipated summer 2023 and is a PS5 exclusive for six months. Yup. So we now know how long this exclusivity lasts. Um, we still don't know exactly if we are getting the PC version of Final Fantasy 16 immediately or if we have to wait a little bit longer like we did with uh, Final Fantasy 15, right? And if we're getting it like half a year later. And if that is the case, that we have to wait for six months, then I am... I, I'm okay with that. I'm like six months is, is completely doable. And... We have so many games next year. I... Yeah, push push that game a little bit back. Like it's I'm okay with that. Um also given the previous Final Fantasy releases I take another six months of patches. Hopefully I can play it on your Xbox. I mean exclusivity for six months is not that crazy. Normally normally Sony is not doing it under a year. So I'm actually kind of surprised that it is only for six months instead. Like, as I said, Sony is very adamant about this. No, a year at least. So it seems like that Square Enix really was putting the foot down here and was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. This, this game is too big. Like, mm-mm. So again, Good for us, for everyone who doesn't have a PlayStation. Um, and yeah, but for me personally, there is no reason to buy a PlayStation just for Final Fantasy for six months. Even if I would have had to wait for like a year or so before I can play the game, I would have not buy a PlayStation. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Speaking of Square Enix, and we really have to make money, uh, Square Enix had their earnings call for the third quarter of 2023. And if you're like, what? Mo, well, it's still 2022. Yeah, that's not how financial years work. But I, I, I get your confusion. No, for them, it is the financial year of 2023, and this is the third quarter. So, makes kind of kind of sense for them. Um, like, best example I can give is always uh, people are surprised when they hear that Microsoft's financial year is ending on the 1st of June, right? Like, Microsoft is not taking January till December. They're basically going June till May, right? And then... They reset. It's just, it's just how they do it. Uh, however, however, uh, for Square Enix, it doesn't look too great, all things considered. Uh, their revenue was 1.1 billion US dollars. That is a minus of 3.3% year over year. Their operating income was 176 million, which is a minus 10.6% year over year. 
um, HD game segment down year over year, despite releases of Live Alive, Dragon Quest X. Um, their MMO segment, though, is up year over year due to growth in subs for Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, let's, let's be real here. At this point, Square Enix survives on the back of Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Without Final Fantasy XIV, which is kind of hilarious because Final Fantasy XIV was nearly the game which tanked the company, um, they would look so much worse. They sold 9.4 million games, uh, which is 39% was digital revenue. Um, well, yeah. That was basically Square Enix looking for the games. Have to put money. It's kind of crazy because Square Enix actually really like released a lot of games, but I also have to admit, a lot of the games they released were mediocre at best. Like. I don't know. Like a lot of a lot of the games they released were kind of mediocre this year. So um how long do you think we will have to wait for the PC version of God of War? A year at least. Yep. I would definitely say a year at least. Um Sony Sony is still fighting internally over how quickly they want to release their games on the PC. Uh, it, will not, it will not take as long as the previous God of War. Uh, keep in mind that all the games we, we fin finally got on the PC from PlayStation, they came out years ago, and they just started to have that strategy of releasing the games on the PC. So they will not do that again. They will not do that again. But at least a year. Yeah. A year. Mm -hmm. yep. a year. because it's <laughs> Sony is an interesting predicament let's face it God of War ships consoles right God of War is such a powerhouse that having this title on your console will ship more consoles. So you want to have that on your console as long as possible to ship more consoles. It's, it's pretty simple. And this is where the problem is. Right now, Sony is shipping every console they have. Sony doesn't need a product which is shipping more consoles because they are shipping everything they have. Because A, not enough consoles are out in the wild, still for a lot of people. Uh, they increase the price tag and people are still buying it like crazy. And again, like PlayStation is in such a good position that they don't need a boost. They don't need one right now. It's, it's not necessary. So <laughs> this, this puts them in the predicament that they might even run into the issue that God of War Ragnarok is not selling as well as it could because they cannot sell as many consoles as many people would want to play the game. So they might actually run into the opposite problem, that there are more people who want to play Ragnarok, but for whatever reason, cannot get a PlayStation. So they might be inclined to release the game faster on the PC. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say, but still a year. Yeah. 
because there is still this. You don't want to piss off your hardcore fans. Like Sony, Sony is aware that those people are already pissed off enough. That basically their their special exclusives are coming to the PC, and normally you would say, well, why would they? Why would they give a shit about that? Because those hardcore fans can really sway over people to buy into the PlayStation hype. It is it is kind of interesting to see how reliant Sony is on those fans to get the word out. The PlayStation is the console to play games on, right? And the last thing they want is to piss them off even more. So yeah, yeah. Uh, next news. Oh, we have some bad news. Yep. Um, apparently, Twitter is not the only company who has fired over 3,700 employees. Just realizing that they probably need a lot of them and uh, ask them to come back to work today. Idiots. But... Meta, aka Facebook, um, has also announced that <clears throat> they had a pretty rough year and that they might have to fire thousands of people but interestingly enough, from what the Wall Street Journal has heard, it will not be the meta department. So it seems like uh, Zuckerberg is still pretty much on the whole meta trip, right? The metaverse is the future. And... Yeah, so apparently those teams will grow and those teams will still not fire anyone, but every other team might be fired. Which is like, oh, well. Okay, burn your money, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't, I don't stop you. I will not hold you back. Like that is completely up to you. Go for it. Um, in other news, in other news, Phil Spencer had another interview with Wired, and he was also reminiscing a little bit about the Activision Blizzard acquisition and which franchises they would love to check out again, if. This is all going through, of course. Right. And he said that they would love to revive some of the Activision Blizzard's IPs, which has been laying around for quite some time. Um, one of them, like StarCraft or even WarCraft, um, of course, he had, he had to be very careful with what he is saying, but he is saying that I don't have any concrete plans today because keep in mind, they have to wait till they are officially taking over Activision Blizzard and yeah, 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 like the whole shipping, you know how it is. Um, but I don't have any concrete plans today because I can't really get into, uh, I can't really get in and with work with the teams but starcraft was a similar moment in gaming right and he also expressed excitement to just talking with activision blizzard and king to look into the back catalog and opportunities we might have but he made it very clear that right now they are not doing that and everyone has to take a breather which makes sense again like I still sometimes see the sentiment of people saying that, hey, why is 
Microsoft not stepping in, what is happening at Activision Blizzard and all that. It, the answer is pretty simple for that. They do not own Activision Blizzard right now. They don't. They did put out an intent, right, to buy them, to own them, and do work with them. But they don't do that yet because they have to wait for the regulators around the world to give them the green light. It's, they have to do that. So, yeah. Speaking of Activision Blizzard, let's talk about Diablo 4. Because over the weekend, there was some interesting development. Um, Windows Central and their sources are claiming that Diablo 4 is slated to release in April 2023 and the pre-order for the game will, will grant players access to the beta, um, possibly in February, will go live in December during the Game Awards. So we already knew that at least the pre-order stuff was kind of happening at the Game Awards because there was already like an internal email which was uh, leaked like one or two months ago, I think. So we already kind of knew that that was happening, uh, but we didn't really know about the release date. So here's now the interesting update. You might say, yeah, duh, I've already heard about that over the weekend. But what you might have missed was... Mike Jabera scheming in on this. Who is Mike Jabera? He is the president of Blizzard. And he wasn't mentioning Diablo, right? Like it, it was not like that he specifically mentioned Diablo and all that. But after the whole article was going live with the release date of Diablo 4, he was just putting out a tweet saying, don't believe everything you read. I I know that people might say, well, that can mean everything. Yeah, but come on. <laughs> uh, like my, Mike is somebody who is reading everything regarding Blizzard and he he saw the article. He saw the article with the Diablo 4 release. So maybe we get it even sooner than that. Uh, there have been rumors that Diablo 4 actually might come out in February. Which, if that would be true, I just looked at the release list yesterday regarding February. We are so screwed. We are absolutely screwed. Like it's it's not even funny anymore. Like this is just PC, okay? This is just PC. But we would get Dead Island 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Wild Hearts, Atomic Hearts, Like a Dragon Ishin. Company of Heroes 3, Sons of the Forest, Blood Bowl 3, Octopath Traveler 2, Kerber Space Program 2, Destiny 2 Lightfall, Darkest Dungeon 2. And then on basically March 1st, we would have the day before Wolong Falling Dynasty and Skull and Bones. <laughs> like... And that is only PC. Like leaving leaving some exclusives from other companies completely aside. And the week before February, we would have Forspoken and Dead Space Remake. Like the first two months of 2023, abs absolutely bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. My, my bank account already sent me a letter and was like, dude, don't count on me, man. I'm out. Like, uh-uh. I will, I will kill myself. 
I swear. <laughs> it, it it would be it would be bad. Yep. But yeah, so we will see what Blizzard's intention is. Um we will probably find out at the game awards, which is in a month. But so if you heard the release date of Diablo 4 being April, probably not. Probably not. So we have to see. Oh, righty. Um, this is not necessarily gaming news, but still an interesting update. Uh, Sonic Frontiers reviews are out. At least the first batch of them. And man, are they split. So those are the reviews for Sonic Frontier, if you're interested. Um, they, are, they are definitely split. Yeah, we have Shack News, Metro, Game Rant, Push Square, Press Start, VGC, giving this pretty high numbers. Whereas Game Informer, Easy Allies, IGN, GameSpot, True Gaming are giving them middling numbers. And Oz Gamers, Games Radar, and Digital Trends is just... Nah, thanks. Thanks, bro. But thanks. <laughs> um, I think... This very much continues the history of the 3D Sonic games. Some people will love the new ones, some people will hate them, and you just have to find a middle ground. So, what we see. Like, my, my biggest concern with the new Sonic Frontiers was the videos they showed us were pretty empty. I think that was that was my biggest concern. Like when I when I when I saw like the open world stuff, it looked so empty. It looked so empty. So I'm I'm just hoping that the Sonic fans will enjoy this. Yep. And that they will have like a lot of fun with it. That's that's the most important part. But with that said, folks. Uh, we are done with the gaming news for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate that. I will be back tomorrow with more gaming news. And if you enjoyed what you have seen, please don't forget to like the video. And also, if you're new to the channel, um, please check out the channel we recorded this, which is youtube.com at chaosmall. And yeah, make also sure to subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. But with that said, I'm out of here. Stay safe. Till then.